Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and whatever else is watching, my name is Nick and today I want to talk about Metroid Dread. Eh, pretty much just like everyone else on YouTube and other social medias. This game has been released more than a month ago and I have had the pleasure to play the game. First of all I want to say that I do not regret buying this game for full, full retail price. Even though its gameplay is two dimensional, that does not mean it cannot be worth 60 euros. To the contrary, this game is its 60 euros more worth than most other AAA three dimensional games. The visuals of Metro Dread are absolutely gorgeous, even with the limited power the Switch has to offer. Samus, and all the enemies are clearly recognizable on screen, while still fitting the environment. I really like the blue and white color scheme that Samus has going in this game. Maybe even more than the uh, original orange and yellow color scheme. The environments are really beautiful. The stark contrast between the natural environments and the emmy zones are really unsettling and I love how the background makes the world alive. Most often you see several creatures in the background running around. Even unsettling, foreboding events that keep you on your toes. The eerie feel of the visuals sets a really good ambience without the need to turn down the light and make things dark. The sound design also contributes a lot to the ambience of Metroid Dread. In the past, the Metroid franchise produced some really iconic music. Music that you can put on a playlist and listen to while do, doing some other tasks as well. Metroid Dread, Dread however opts for a more different approach. Some of the iconic, iconic music themes do make it into Dread, but they are mostly relegated to the beginning story of the game. During gameplay, when you traverse the environment, the music is more geared to set an ambience. This makes the music on its own less memorable. However, it amplifies the atmosphere and mood of the game drastically. More so than before, Metroid Dread feels like a thriller movie. I have heard some say even a horror movie, but for that it lacks the real, really nightmare fuel, scary stuff to gross you out. But the scary thriller is a more apt description. The sound effects of the Emmy and local creatures combined with the ambient music keeps you tensed up in your chair every single moment you are playing. And playing the game mostly feels fantastic. I really like the diversity of navigating the caverns of the planet CDR. Samus has a good moveset which increases with every new power up you get. And if you get some skill you can glide through the caverns in no time. The creatures you come across serve as a good challenge but not one that can seriously slow you down. It is a lot of fun trying to find all the secrets, although most of them require a power up that you can get later in the game. And this is something that Metroid Dread does really well also. Metroid Dread is a fairly linear game, and the game is smart about guiding the player to the next destination. In Fusion and Zero Mission, the game literally marked on your map the next place where to get a new power-up. Metro Dread does not do this. Instead, the player suddenly comes across a power-up as the game forces you in certain directions. Even when you come to a crossroad, there is always one path that leads to progress. The others quickly turn into dead ends that you cannot pass without the required power-up. Often you find yourself on a path with points of no return. The player is then forced to continue until 
the game allows you to backtrack to earlier areas. Of course if you have the skill the game provides several sequence breaking options, but for a casual playthrough the game is linear. However, how Metroid Dread creates this linearity is rather subtle, and you probably wouldn't notice it upon a first playthrough. The Emmy enemies are a great source of dread at first. When you first enter a new Emmy zone door, you know that one of these guys will be waiting for you behind it. The Emmy are different than the SAX enemy was before in Metroid Fusion. With the SAX, the encounters were scripted and when it appeared, it was more like a jump scare followed by a scripted event where you quickly make your way to safety. While praying the SAX doesn't pump you full of holes with Samus' full might. With the Emmy you know that it is coming when you cross a door into an Emmy zone. You can hear it when it is close. You can see its scanning cone before you see the Emmy itself. And its AI is really adept at hunting you. Once an Emmy spots you, all the exit doors out of the Emmy zone will be closed until you manage to evade the Emmy. Once an Emmy catches you, it's pretty much instant, an instant game over, even with a short window, window to counter. All this combined makes for a pretty tense game of cat and mouse. Unfortunately, the tension and dread are quickly replaced with annoyance and irritation when you get caught often. Sometimes I just let the Emmy kill me and once it spots me, due to irritation. The story of Metroid Dread is rather standard for a Metroid game. At the beginning of the game you have a short recap of the second and fourth Metroid games and then the story for Metroid Dread begins. Which pretty much constitutes like any other Metroid game. On the planet CDR is something going on. The Federation seemingly cannot handle it. Samus goes in to investigate and upon arrival loses all her power ups. Again. Now Samus needs to defeat the bad guy and escape. It is a pretty basic story and I find it a bit lacking. Sometimes you come across some terminals which allows you to talk to your ship. But those serve one of three purposes. One, to explain a new power up to you, which you pretty much have figured out already. Two, to tell you that you are nearing an upcoming boss. Hmm, that could be useful. Or three, to repeat the events that you have already experienced before. Just to tell you and not show you. Even though I have heard many describe Samus as being a badass, I would rather say she is more of a blank slate. Her badassness can more be found in the gameplay with every awesome move in her moveset. It cannot be found in the cinematic cutscenes however. In those I think Samus is more of a blank slate proxy character. I have yet to see anything concerning Samus's past. Okay, allow me to explain. Samus may be a lone wolf bounty hunter, but that does not mean she has no friends, other loved ones, or even people she may dislike. That all have had an impact on her life. I have seen nothing of that in this game. The game does not explain the lore of Samus' character, does not explain the world that Samus actually lives in, beyond what you can directly witness in the game, through gameplay. Which is a damn shame, it's something I liked from Other M actually, which does a lot more of that. 
the Emmy and the story are two minor flaws, but they do not spoil the fun that can be had with this game. So you may now be wondering, with all the praise that I have given this game already, why would I not continue playing this game and finish it? Short answer is that no game is perfect and Metroid Dread is no exception. Metroid Dread has two major flaws that destroy all the fun I could be having with this game. The first major flaw are the controls. Originally when I had to play with these controls in Metroid Samus Returns, I thought the fault was completely due to the Nintendo 3DS not being con comfortably enough for the action in Metroid games. Alas, that's not, that is not the case. Metroid Dread has shown me that the controls are not good to begin with. Okay, running, jumping, that's all just fine. It's like any Mario platformer. Shooting the beam, charging the beam and melee counters are all just fine. They are as basic as it can get and if this were all the controls I would have been a happy camper. However, you also have the ability to free aim in 360 degrees. For this you are required to keep the L button pressed in and to push the left control stick in the direction you want to shoot. Samus also has rockets in her arsenal next to her beam weapon. And for Samus to use the rockets, you need to keep the R button pressed in and tap the Y button to fire the rocket. When you need to do a barrage of rockets, you need to tap the Y button in a rapid succession. And more often than is good for me, you have to shoot rockets while in free aim mode. This means that I have to keep tension on my left index finger and thumb and my right index finger while moving my right thumb as fast as I can. Metroid Dread is, after Samus Returns, the second game I have ever played that gives me literal physical pain. In all seriousness, is it too much to ask that I can just tap the L button and go into frame free aim mode without the need to hold it? And just tap the R button to activate the rocket without the need to hold it. It is not like we have to cycle through various options. It, it's only rockets on or off. And free aim mode on or off. They are like light switches. The current controls seriously hurts. This is painful. And unfortunately this happens a lot during the boss fights. Previously I mentioned how much I like the gameplay. However I intentionally never mentioned the boss fights at the time. Because that is the second major flaw with this game. I do not like the boss fights. And I also recognize that this dislike for a big part has to do with who I am. I have never been fast. Ever since I was young, I was really slow with putting thought into motion. From the moment I think of moving my body until the moment that my body executes the motions, it takes a while for me. And now that I'm actually old, this has not improved, but rather gotten worse. This impediment plays a large part with the boss fights. 
The bosses in Metroid Dread do give tells to which attack they are going to execute. Some have larger windows than others, but for me it's always too small. Because my reaction time is so slow, it means that I have to decide which attack to avoid or counter before the boss gives a tell to what attack he is going to do next. It basically means that a boss fight for me is the same as playing in a lottery. And when I make a wrong choice, the boss does a lot of damage. This game does not pull its punches and there is no room for mistakes. It isn't all bad, because with my positioning, compared to the boss, I can go to him into a limited subset of attacks he will use. So that lowers the options for my lottery choice. But I still could choose wrong. Because bosses are so damaging, I really need to use the most out of the openings the bosses give me. And that means a lot of free aiming with rockets. Which hurts! As bosses are lotteries, I die a lot with them. Take the first boss for example. I was defeated at least 20, if not 30 times, on just the first boss. Rather often it takes hours for me to defeat a boss. Because when I finally win, I do not feel any excitement over defeating a hard boss. I only feel the groan groaning relief of finally passing the lottery. And I can put down the game and get some rest for my aching hands. I do not feel accomplished with defeating a boss. Just painfully relieved that I'm finally allowed to play the game again. Which has to wait until the next day because my hands hurt from the free aiming and the rockets. In my opinion, this game could have done with a more accessible easy mode. I can already hear some of you say that I just need to get good. But the thing is that getting good is about learning patterns and the proper responses to tells. But if I am too slow to react to those tells, that is not, not something you can train if I have to anticipate which tell is going to come. That is not something you can train. That's just basically luck. Especially not at my age. Consider that I'm old enough to have experienced the NES era. And a friend of mine still had an Atari 2600. Yeah, I'm that old. I could deal with the lotteries and the paints as long as there were new patterns to discover with new bosses, but I noticed that the game started to reuse boss fights. And when I came across the same boss for the third time, I did not engage it. I did not even try to lose. I did not care how much progress was lost. But right then and there, I closed the game turned off the switch and took out the cartridge as I felt all the enjoyment instantly drain away. To close off my arguments, I have to say that I can see why many reviewers praise this game a lot. I can see why many say it should be a game of the year contender. I have played the game for almost 30 hours now and I'm done. I'm probably halfway in the game and will just watch someone else's let's play to see the end. With the ne next Metroid in the series I will probably wait until the it ends up in the bargain bin or sold as a used copy to add it to my game collection. There are many games out there that do not hurt to play and I still would like to play them. 
With that said, I hope you liked listening to the, this video. If so, leave a like. If not, please let me know what I can improve. I would also like to know to read your opinions on Metro Dread in the comments below. I thank you all for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye!